My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today we have a rather curious gospel passage. It's one, to be honest, that has somewhat confounded me over the years because Jesus doesn't seem terribly friendly or kind to Martha in this story. It's also a story that culturally is rather peculiar because Jesus does certain things that in his time would have likely never or rarely would have ever taken place. Even in our own day, the story presents certain challenges. A little cultural background here, and this is still very much true in parts of the Middle East. When a great meal is offered, oftentimes women and men do not actually sit together, but rather the men will sit or recline in one room while the woman will be busy in another. And so the woman will occasionally, or even their children, will actually bring the food to the men. So the two groups typically sit apart. In fact, I had experience of this a few years ago when sharing a meal with some friends of mine from the Jordan. Very much that was the case. We sat separately. In this story, however, Mary reclines at the feet of Jesus. A very curious act. Because in that time, an unmarried man would not sit with an unmarried woman. So already the story has all these curiosities, but to make the story even more fascinating is Jesus' reprimand to Martha. Now, how many of you have been trying to prepare for a meal and somebody tells you to relax? Have any of you had that happen? I see a few smiles. Okay, let's be honest here. <laughs> when you're busy and you're trying to set a meal and then you look at your partner and your partner's over there taking their time, <laughs> does that annoy you? <laughs> okay, let's be honest here. <laughs> you can relax, it's summer. I know it's hot. <laughs> you don't have to be too serious today. Imagine what Martha must have felt. She was trying to do everything she could do to provide the most gracious welcome and hospitality to Jesus and his disciples. And in that culture, here's another cultural thing. In that culture of the day, and still very much to this day around the Middle East and the Mediterranean, hospitality is one of the most important acts you can offer to your guests. So Martha was doing everything right. And I, quite frankly, don't blame her for getting mad at Mary. <laughs> Seriously. You're running around trying to prepare the meal, and you got Mary, who just seems to be taking her time like, mm, this is fine. Frustrating. But to make it even worse, what does Jesus do? Oh, Martha, Mary's chosen the better part. How infuriating that must have been. To Martha, that Mary has chosen the better part. How infuriating. For the longest time the church has wrestled with this passage, we haven't quite, and I don't even know if we fully understand what is going on in the story. It's one of those curious incidents in the scriptures where, quite frankly, there's a lot of problems going on. So it makes it difficult to exactly understand what Jesus is getting at. But what I suspect, and what most contemporary biblical scholars suspect is that Jesus is trying to emphasize the ministry of diakonos, or service, as being connected to the ministry of prayer. And here's what I mean by that. How many of you heard of the word deacon or diakonos at some point in your life? Anybody? Okay, you're going to learn now and next week you get quizzed on this. Diakonos is a term that refers to service to one who cares and gives service to others, loving service, a care and compassion. In the church, we have deacons to this day. They continue on that ministry of service. In the early church, deacons would care for the poor, the vulnerable, and still very much are called to do so today. So you have Martha, who's fully living into what we call a diaconos ministry. But there's a clue in the text that Martha is perhaps overwhelmed. She's sort of taken on too much. And it says that she's distracted. And so I suspect what Jesus might be getting at, and many scholars suspect, 
is that Jesus is trying to reorient the ministry of service to be rooted in the one who gives of himself, to reorient it in love. Now let me add a little piece here. Many of us in our lives, I think, feel very overwhelmed. How many of you feel overwhelmed? Again, you don't have to be shy today. You can raise your hands. I know in our parish, we've been talking a lot. Our parish leaders and I have been t- reflecting on this a lot. We feel like we're constantly going, 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 going. And in fact, it feels like we have KPIs all the time. Right, Mark? We've got key performance indicators always telling us how well we're doing in the parish. And it gets stressful. I know for me as a priest, it often gets stressful because I feel like, am I doing enough? It gets even harder when I get to my office and there's about 36 things on my uh, to-do list and that list seems to keep growing and growing. And the temptation for me, and perhaps for you as well, is that I get so focused on all the things that I do that I forget exactly why I'm doing them. That my life becomes ruled by tasks. But I forget why. Why do I do the things that I do? And so I think Jesus' invitation is, Martha, pause. Remember what you are about. Consider the moment. Now for those of us in ministry, ministry isn't all about work. In fact, a lot of churches can get themselves into trouble because they get so focused on doing, doing, doing that they lose a sense of their true identity. They lose a sense of what draws them here to this place. And so we're encouraged, I think, by this passage and challenged even perhaps to say, you know what, sometimes it is good to pause. It is good to take a break and to slow down a little bit. Ministry can never be done if it is not first and foremost grounded in prayer. And I know that may seem trite, that may seem incredibly pious, but it's true. You will never accomplish anything if you are solely driven by business models or standards. If we are not rooted first and foremost in the living God, all this is utterly meaningless. It's pointless. I feel this as a priest. If I get so focused in the work and I forget prayer, I get burnt out. I become exhausted. I become grumpy. And maybe send grumpy emails to the choir. (laughs) That's because I might not, they're laughing because I sent them a note a couple weeks ago. The reality is, it's true. If we don't first and foremost ground ourselves in the living God, we will grow exhausted. And all the work we do will never actually fully accomplish what it tends to do. We will be wanting The invitation here is to simply pause and be present. Now, I don't, how many of you meditate? I'm getting you to, I'm asking, you're also funny today. Such good Anglicans, nobody wants to raise their hands, nobody wants to respond. (laughs) Very good Anglicans here today. How many of you meditate? How many of you take pause? How many of you go for walks? Okay, that's better. Walks can be meditative, by the way. So by meditation, it, I don't necessarily always mean just sitting down and quietly in a particular prayer posture, but if you take walks, if you take breaks from stuff, that's good. Try not to wear headphones. Try not to let anything else distract you, but simply be present and listen. Because the still voice of God will often be speaking to you in those times. For me as a priest, I feel most nourished coming into this church and oftentimes early in the morning when nobody's here, I'll just sit down in this sanctuary and let the quiet consume me. When I do that, my ministry becomes ten times more effective. I feel more joy, more happiness, more life because I've sat in the presence of the living God. That's the invitation for us today. 
Again, I know it sounds pious, but it's true. The life of the Christian will never be sustained if we are not grounded in prayer. This is why in the parish I've recently introduced that whole idea of Thursday prayer. It's an invitation for you to come down, just sit. You don't have to do anything in particular, but just sit, be still, and as the psalmist says, be still and know that I'm God. Let yourselves be fed. Yes, the work will come along, but let yourselves be fed first and foremost. For you cannot give of love if you not first sat down and spend time with love. Jesus Christ himself. Amen.